Hey guys, welcome to the MiniJet YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to take a look at three of the most popular sand traps on the market for your mini jet boat, and we're gonna put them to the test. As part of this test, we'll check out what's included with each unit, the weight of each unit, and the dimensions of each unit. Last but not least, we'll see how much debris they can actually extract from the water. Before we start, let's refresh ourselves on why you may choose to run a sand trap and what their purpose is. When boating in shallow areas, it's quite common for sand or other debris to be sucked up by your intake and run through your jet pump. Now this isn't a huge deal for most of the components in the pump if they're upgraded or were made out of metal by the OEM. However, we start to run into some issues when we get to the cooling pickup. Some of the water coming off of the jet pump is rerouted and sent inboard to cool your engine. If this water is contaminated with sand, it may accumulate in your cooling system, which could ultimately lead to overheating as well as a host of other bad things, potentially resulting in engine failure. Now, if we install the sand trap between the pickup on the jet pump and the inlet on the engine, we can filter out the debris before it makes its way into the engine's cooling system, making sure that it gets nice, clean water. Now the sand trap will have to be emptied fairly regularly to ensure it doesn't get backed up. That's a pretty small price to pay to keep your engine running well. Now let's talk about the three sand traps that we're gonna be testing today. First, we have the Triple S Engineering Sand Trap. Now out of the box, this is a pretty bare bones unit, so you'll have to supply your own fittings, drain valve, and mounting hardware like we've got here. We're looking at a weight of about 4.3 pounds and overall dimensions of 14 by six by six inches. Second, we have the KLS Marine Sand Trap. This one includes three quarter inch inlet and outlet fittings, as well as a drain valve, but you'll need to supply your own mounting hardware. This unit weighs about five and a half pounds and has overall dimensions of 12 by six by six inches. Finally, we have the MiniJet Sand Trap. This kit is pretty comprehensive and includes all the fittings and mounting hardware that you'll need. We offer this kit in your choice of three quarter, five eighths, or half inch inlet and outlet fittings to suit different cooling lines and different sizes. With this kit, we also supply a raw aluminum mounting bracket, which you can either bolt or weld into your hull. This unit is by far the lightest at 3.3 pounds and is fairly compact with dimensions of 17 by 10 by six inches. One notable feature about this trap is that unlike the other traps that rely purely on gravity or centrifugal force to remove debris, the MiniJet Sand Trap uses a combination of gravity, centrifugal force, and an additional stainless steel filter to catch even more debris and prevent it from reaching your engine. So here we've got our Sand Trap testing rig. Now at the top, we have a constant supply of cooling water and a bucket with an agitated mix of sand and other debris. This slurry of water and debris will flow down from this bucket and enter our sand trap that we're testing on the stand. Now on this test stand, we can observe the function of each of the sand traps and watch as they fill up with sand and debris. So we've got a clean bucket, which will capture the exiting water and show if any debris has gotten past the sand traps. All right, so let's start the water and get into the sand trap shootout. All right, so we've got the Triple S Engineering sand trap mounted in our testing rig. Let's flow some water and sand through it and see how it performs. All right, and we're just about filled up, and so we can see a lot of our sand is bypassing the filter here. So that's not great. Let's uh, take this thing apart and see what we're looking at. All right, so here we've got the results from our um, Triple S Engineering Sand Traps. This is what all bypassed the system. So this is basically everything going into your engine at this point. So we're looking at a lot of leafy debris on top and underneath, I think we've got a bit of sand. So let's strain off the top layer and then we'll get to see what's actually underneath. All right, so there we can see all of the sand that bypassed the sand trap. Now this is not good. This is all the stuff that's going into your engine once this sand trap is filled up. So again, the Triple S sand trap does not come with any fittings or a drain valve. So in this case, we've just used some simple brass fittings and a drain plug to fix the bottom of the trap. And by removing the plug at the bottom here, we can drain the sand and debris out of the unit, which, which we'll do in a second. All right, so let's go ahead and empty our Triple S sand trap and get all the debris out of here. We're just gonna place our bucket underneath and simply remove our makeshift plug system that we've got going on here. All right, now if you're on the side of the river and this is kind of what you've got to work with, 
you know, you're trying to empty your sand trap and you just pull the plug out um, without running your engine, um, there's a lot of sand still caught inside the trap. Now this can be flushed out with extra cooling water by turning your engine on, but it's really hard to completely clean uh, the flat bottom of the trap um, and it leaves a lot of debris still in the system. So it may seem trivial, but remember it's good practice to empty your cooling system when boating in different environments to prevent biological cross-contamination. And not being able to fully extract this debris can make flushing the system quite a bit harder. All right, so we've got the KLS sand trap mounted up in our jig right now. Um, let's run some water through it and see how it does. Now, just like the triple S unit, we can see the bolt is filling with sand and debris as the cooling water moves through the system. And now as the trap reaches its maximum capacity, we can see that there's a lot of sand bypassing the filter and that's going straight into your engine. So let's stop this test. Uh, we'll empty out the sand trap and see what's in the final bucket. All right, so let's see what the KLS sand trap let through the system. So up top here, we've got a lot of organic material. Now these are all leaves and stuff that floats in water that the centrifugal style trap uh, is not able to get out. So that's both the triple S style and this KLS trap. So once we pour this off, we'll be able to see the sand underneath and that's what we're really looking for here. All right, so we got a lot of organic debris in here and underneath we can see there's a pretty healthy amount of sand. Now this is not ideal. That's all sand that's gonna be going into your engine otherwise. All right, so this KLS sand trap does include a ball valve uh, for the bottom of the trap. Now that's very handy because it makes draining this a lot easier than trying to pull out a plug. So let's open this guy up. Now, as we can see, there's still some sand that's caught inside the trap. This can be flushed out with some extra cooling water by turning our boat on and running it, but it's really hard to completely clean uh, due to the flat bottom of the trap. So like we mentioned before, we wanna make sure that this is done somewhat frequently. So the easier it is to fully clean out, the better. So the KLS sand trap has captured an impressive amount of debris, uh, namely in the form of sand. But when we look at the outlet bucket, we can see that there's a lot of sand that has also bypassed this trap. Uh, and all of this sand is going into our engine block or our cooling system, which is not ideal. All right, so let's get the mini jet sand trap mounted in this next, and we can repeat the test to see how it works differently compared to these last two. All right, so we've got the mini jet sand trap mounted up in our testing rig. Um, unlike the other filters, we've got these guide vanes up here that'll hopefully make a nice cyclone for the water. And we've also got a filter element to filter out that lighter debris that we saw a lot of coming through in our previous tests. So without further ado, let's get this test underway and get some dirty water flowing. So with the trap in action, we can see the cyclone flow that's happening thanks to the guiding vanes at the top. And you'll notice that the filtered sand is kind of building up at the bottom of the reservoir with the filter element working to remove that smaller and lighter leaf debris that might otherwise flow through the other traps and enter our engine. Now, as the mini jet sand trap starts to reach its maximum capacity, we can also see that the filter element becomes blocked and that the filter of water through the trap has dropped significantly. Now debris has backed up in the supply line running to the sand trap, but importantly, the debris is not flowing through the outlet and that means it's staying out of our engine. So let's stop this test. We'll empty out the sand in the trap and see what's ended up in the final buckets. So we've got this bucket full of all the water that came out of this other end of the sand trap. Now you'll notice that unlike the other two buckets, there's no leaves on top here. So it's a really good sign. That means our filter is working inside of the trap. So it's capturing all that lighter than water debris that's otherwise flowing straight through the others. So let's dump off this water and see how much sand is actually inside of the outlet bucket. All right, so we can see there, there's barely any sand that's actually made it through. So this is really good. Remember, this resembles our engines. So the less sand that's in this bucket, the better. Now let's empty out this side of the trap and uh, see how that goes. Yeah. All right, so while this filter does filter out a lot of leaf debris, sometimes that means that we get a little bit stuck um, at the ball valve itself. Um, but with a little poking tool, thank you. With a little poking tool, we can kind of fish that other debris out, make sure our trap's nice and clean. Perfect, and you'll notice that with the conical bottom of this trap, we don't get the same amount of debris trapped in here that we'd have to flush out with water, 
as with the other traps. That's really good from a servicing and uh, flushing perspective. Very easy to get all the debris out the first time. So one other really cool feature about the mini jet sand trap is it's very easy to take apart. So even though we do have a little bit of extra debris kind of stuck to the walls, very simple to get that out. So I'll show that to you right now. Really quickly, there's this big nut at the top that we can go ahead and remove. And so by doing that, we can pull off the entire filter element. Now from here, it's very simple to just kind of, you know, pull out the extra debris that's kind of lodged itself in here. And this is something that you could do at the side of the river if you're in a pinch. Okay, so here's our filtering element with that nice, you know, kind of cycloning veins at the top that we were talking about before. And you can see this is a very fine grit filter, um, which means it's keeping a lot of the sand and the debris out of our engine. Like I mentioned before, super easy to clean at the side of the river. I'll just rinse this out in our bucket here. Same thing with this guy. Slide that back together. Throw the nut on the bottom. And very easily we can bolt this back up to here and get back on the river. Well folks, that's it for our sand trap shootout. Hopefully this lab demonstration helped you better understand the function of a sand trap and gives you the evidence that you need to make an informed decision when purchasing your next sand trap. We offer all three of these sand traps for sale on our website, www.minijet.ca. If you have any questions about these sand traps or if you want more information about any of our other products, please contact us through email, phone calls, or by direct message on our social media platforms. We're always happy to chat about boats. Thanks for joining us in the lab today. Be sure to drop a comment if you'd like to see more videos like this and let us know what products you'd like to see us test next. Catch you on the water.